The simplest way to never get triangle choked again is to follow this simple rule. Have both hands above his legs or outside his legs or have both hands under his legs. It's when one hand is over and one hand is under that you get triangle choked. For almost all variations of the triangle choke, he needs one arm inside the legs. So never casually uh, be passing the guard and put one hand under. If he knows grappling, he will finish that choke and tap you up for sure. Now there are guard passes that rely on one hand under. But to pull those off properly, you're doing a number of other adjustments to make the triangle choke much harder to do. You're putting a lot of stacking pressure forward, you're positioning yourself on the shin, and this arm isn't just casually lying around, it's you're short arming with it. So you're here. So you're not here where you probably get triangle choke, your elbow's in. And here's another thing. Usually when your opponent catches you in a triangle, it's not gonna be fully locked on right away. Say I'm stupid, I put my hand under here and he shoots the triangle. Usually it starts out going through a phase like this where it's just the ankles that are crossed. It's not fully locked yet. So at this point, before it gets locked, I want to posture up. I want to look up, I want to have my head up, I want to have my body up. This makes it much harder for him to close it, for him to close the, uh, the ankles. So from here, as I'm posturing up, I've got a couple of options. I can reach up here and pull his leg open. That often works. But say I can't do that. Now I've got a couple of other options. One is to put both hands, lock them together, push down on his belly. And remember, if I look down, he's going to finish. He's going to pull my head. So I literally look up at the ceiling. I look, my eyes up, my head is up, my body's up, and I push down on his hips. Or if it's with the gi, I can do a couple of other tricks. I can take my hand and I can grip the pants back here, and I can grip the lapel. Now I basically sandwich his body, and I push up. By holding his pants down, and pushing his belt down, basically I'm holding his legs in place. Close your ankle. And that allows me to reach up without him following me. So, two hands under, two hands over, and if you do get caught, posture up like crazy. This is a cool triangle escape. Richie catches me in the full-on triangle. Here, here. Now, I can't make posture, he's got me bent forward. What I'm gonna do instead is take my hand, that's of the trapped arm, and put it forward on the opposite side of his head. And I'm gonna come up onto my hands and drive forward. Now, I'm gonna take my knee and drive in the side of his hip here. The next thing I do, I step over his head with that foot and I spin to the far side of his head. I get his head, I turn him flat on his back. Now I've got side mount and he doesn't have triangle choke anymore. Here's some details that'll make this escape even more effective. So, I've got two hands. I use the hand of the arm that's trapped, right? It's inside his legs. I don't put it on this side of the head. I put it across the head. You'll find that easier most times anyway. If he's wearing a gi, you can grab the lapel. If he's not wearing a gi, or even if he is, and you don't have time to fish for the lapel, just put your fist on the floor. The purpose here is to stop his head from being able to turn. So now, if I just reach forward without driving, he can just hold my wrist, extend his hips up without even opening his legs, and try and alarm guard me, or step over my face, both of which are bad. So two things stop him from being able to do that. The first is coming forward and pinning him. I've got a lot of weight on him. The second thing is taking this knee and driving in to the side of his hip, and also this hand here. It prevents him from spinning a little bit. So now, when I step over his head and continue to turn, there's a brief moment here where if I just turn without coming over his head, he can catch me 
in a normal plot of arm rock. Which is why I want to step over his head and then go past his head. Watch what I mean. Here, he can maybe almost plot on me. If I step over his head, the omoplata is completely shut down. And you know what? Even if you get caught in an omoplata, again, at least there's motion. It's maybe a little bit easier to escape from an omoplata than it is to escape from a fully uh, locked triangle. So give this technique a shot. It'll work for you very often. And sometimes you'll end up in a, real, in a really interesting scramble. This is a last ditch triangle escape. It's locked on, you can't posture up, you're going out, you're kind of hooped. You can still try this, and it's got a pretty good chance of working. So, we're here, Richie's got the triangle locked on. He's leaving a little bit loose so I can actually talk to you, but it'll work against the fully closed triangle. Now, this is my free hand, this is my trap hand. I'm gonna take my free hand and control Richie's wrist. Now, I'm gonna drive forward, and bring my foot underneath his body. I'm going to drive a little bit forward. Then I'm going to take my other leg and step up into the armpit. Now maintaining the wrist grab and kicking this leg straight, I push and pull. I'm going to pull his wrist. I'm going to kick with my leg. I'm going to squeeze my knees a little bit to make it harder for him to come up. Now it's a scramble for the top. I can't promise you the top position, but you are out of the triangle, so you should be pretty happy with that. In an ideal world, I bring his leg to the side, pull my leg under, come up and get the top. One of the keys is to grab the wrist. If you're fighting some guy in a gi, it's more secure if you just grab the end of the sleeve. This way there's no way it's gonna slip. Plus the other thing is, if you're controlling his arm, whether you're here or here, it makes it a little bit harder for him to reach up, pull your head down, and finish the position. So by controlling the sleeve, you make it harder for him to finish the choke. It buys you some more time as well. Now, Go ahead, close it please. I put my foot in the armpit, not in the bicep. This is not the spider guard. Spider guard, you put the foot in the bicep. I want it in the armpit. I don't want it to slip. I don't want it to move around. So we're here. Close your legs fully please. From here, I've got to arch backwards and kick this leg. If I just hang out here without arching, he can tighten it, he can eventually choke me out, or he can armbar me. Tap, tap. So once we're here, I don't stop. I protect this arm, and I arc back and kick. I need to go. That foot's in the armpit, I need to go. Now some people have a variation of this, and it's good if you're more flexible. I prefer the armpit. But some people prefer, go ahead please. They come forward and they bring the feet over the belly, like this, and then they arch backwards. That's good too, if you're more flexible. I think if you kick it into the armpit, that's a pretty solid position. It's not going to wiggle out of there anytime soon, and you don't need to be super flexible. It's a great escape, give it a try.